it wasn't easy being born into Puritan New England. A visit to a Puritan graveyard shows that Puritan children often died in the first years of life. Puritan families had as many as 15 children, but infant mortality was high. Those infants lucky enough to survive were baptized immediately. Once baptized, Puritan children had about seven years in which their lives were relatively carefree. Even John Cotton, a great enforcer of Puritan morality, was willing to grant children seven years of bliss. Children spend much time in play. Even the first seven years are spent in pastime, and God looks not much at it. But once children became seven years old or so, their lives changed. The rigid discipline of Puritan life began in earnest. Listen to this quotation from a Puritan pamphlet about child rearing. Surely there is in all children a stubbornness and stoutness of mind which must in the first place be broken and beaten down. This kind of discipline would become more important when young Puritans reach the age of 16. According to Massachusetts law books, this was the age when people began to be legally responsible for their actions. Laws in the Puritan colonies set very high standards for almost every kind of behavior. At one time or another in the Puritan colonies, people were hauled into court for dancing with a member of the opposite sex, eavesdropping, meddling, neglecting work, picking peas on Sunday, playing with fire, playing shuffleboard, and celebrating Christmas. The most famous example of Puritan justice is the Salem Witch Trials. In Salem, Massachusetts, in 1692, several hundred people were accused of witchcraft. One witch who was put to death was a woman who walked through muddy roads without getting dirty. Children who got sick and a man who was killed accidentally when his gun went off were thought to be victims of witchcraft. Twenty people who were convicted of witchcraft were executed. But few Puritan lives were disrupted by this kind of upheaval. Most Puritans continued to live their lives in a normal way, marrying in their mid-twenties and assuming their proper adult roles. Men's and women's roles in Puritan society were strictly defined and not equal. Puritan women could not vote or speak in church or attend college. Women who stepped outside the boundaries of their roles faced the wrath of men like John Winthrop, governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Winthrop once explained the Puritan woman's insanity by saying, if she had attended to household affairs and such things as belong to women and not gone out of her way and calling to meddle in such things as are proper for men whose minds are stronger, she had kept her wits and might have improved them usefully and honorably in the place God had set her. Puritan society limited women's roles, but it also offered them protections they didn't have in England. For example, it was against the law for a man to strike his wife or even speak sharply to her. But Puritan society was definitely controlled by men. Each household was run by the eldest male, who was often the only one who had a chair. This is where we get the term chairman. Governing the towns was also strictly a male role. Puritan men and women would maintain their proper roles throughout their adult lives, which could be as long as 60 or 70 years. Elderly Puritans who could no longer care for themselves often went to live with their children. The death of a community member, especially a beloved or prominent one, provided the reason for one of the few genuine Puritan holidays, a funeral. The funeral ceremony itself would have been brief and stark, but afterwards the mourner sat down to a great and memorable feast. Even after their deaths, Puritans left clues about their lives. Their possessions would be inventoried, and many of these inventories have survived but these lists can still be mysterious. Many mention items that historians still can't identify. Though many customs of Puritan daily life have faded into the past, the culture of Puritan New England left a lasting mark on America. The foundation for our system of laws, the importance of the work ethic, a sense of responsibility to our communities. These truly American ideals are a legacy that remains to this day.